What's going on guys, Mirai here, back again with another Genshin Impact video, and today we are going to be taking a look at Ganyu, which is going to be the next 5-star character that we will be getting in update 1.2. She is a cryo bow user that is very focused on charge shots to deal damage to her opponents. We'll be covering everything you need to know about Ganyu today, and I have included timestamps so you can use those to skip to the parts that are relevant to you. Also, I make tons of Genshin Impact guides, reviews, news, and updates, so if you don't want to miss that, do consider dropping a sub to the channel as that would be a very very nice New Year's gift for me. Anyway, let's begin. First things first, her main stat is going to be crit damage, so over here you can see, as you level her up, she will be getting more crit damage, so you definitely want to build crit chance on her. Also, her ascension materials are Qingxing and Wapple Flower Nectars, so if you are interested in pulling for her, you might want to have those materials prepared, and now would be a good time to start. Moving on, we do get to her normal attack. Like I've mentioned at the start of this video, she is very reliant on her charge shots to deal most of her damage, so she might not be for everyone. So her normal attack is pretty normal, she shoots arrows in a 6 hit combo, but her charge shot is pretty interesting. So let's break it down. Her charge shots has two phases, so to activate phase 2, you just have to, well, hold her charge shot a little longer, and you will be getting that level 2 charge shot. So her level 1 charge shot is the same as every other archers out there, nothing special, but her level 2 charge shots fires off a frost flake arrow that does cryo damage, and it blooms to deal AoE cryo damage. So on my screen right now, you can see the damage scaling on her charge shots, and if you take a look closely, the initial damage from the level 2 charge shot actually only deals a little more than the regular level 1 charge shot. But the damage from the bloom is actually insane. At Talon level 6, her level 2 charge shot does 179% damage and her frost flake arrow bloom does another 304%. That's almost 500% damage total on one charged shot. That's not even accounting for the crit damage and cryo damage bonus multipliers. That is a lot of damage. Moving on to her elemental skill, she leaps backwards, leaving an Ice Lotus behind which deals AoE cryo damage. It continuously taunts surrounding opponents, scales based on her max HP, which by the way isn't important, and it blooms profusely when its duration ends or it's destroyed, dealing AoE cryo damage. So this skill is basically Ember's E, and it doesn't even deal continuous cryo damage. What? But anyway, it is going to be good for her because not only does it taunt opponents, it also lets Ganyu regain her positioning in the field, which happens to be, you know, as far from the opponent as possible for more charge shots. And the damage isn't too great and the duration is a little on the short side, but overall it's a pretty okay skill. Next, her elemental burst. She summons a sacred cryo pearl, raining shards of ice down on her opponents in an AoE and deals cryo damage. It lasts for 15 seconds and the cooldown is 20 seconds. Again, this skill is very similar to Amber's Q, except the AoE is much larger and the duration is far longer. And this skill makes a ton of sense on Ganyu. The objective of this skill, in my opinion, is to pair her up with a Hydro unit and freeze the enemies in that AoE so that she will be able to, again, fire her charged shots from afar. Moving on to her Talon Ascension materials, she requires the Guide of Diligence and more Wapper Flower Nectars to level her talents up, so do make sure you are prepared if you are pulling for her. Next would be her passive talents. So her first passive talent is that she refunds 15% of the ores used when crafting bow-type weapons. Nothing too special there. And her level 20 Ascension talent is after firing a Frost Flick Arrow, which is the level 2 charge shot, the crit rate of subsequent Frost Flick Arrows and their resulting Bloom effects is increased by 20% for 5 seconds. So this passive makes her charge shots really really good if you fire them in succession. Lastly, for her level 70 Ascension talent, her Elemental Burst grants a 20% Cryo Damage bonus to active party members in the AoE. I don't really see much of a point for this to be honest, because you will most probably not be in the AoE and away from the AoE when using it, unless you are either fighting close range for some reason, or you're using a melee cryo character, which right now we only have Chong Yun. Next we move on to her constellations. For constellation 1, taking damage from a charged level 2 frost flake arrow or bloom decreases opponent's cryo resistance by 15% for 6 seconds. A hit regenerates 2 energy for Ganyu and this effect can only occur once per charge level 2 frost flake arrow, regardless if the frost flake arrow itself or its bloom hits the target. 
So this constellation further reinforces her level 20 ascension talent, firing off level 2 charge arrows in succession will give you more damage, and I highly recommend getting her C1 if you are using her as your main DPS. Moving on to constellation 2, her elemental skill gains one additional charge. I can see this as being extremely useful to get yourself out of sticky situations, but I definitely cannot recommend getting this constellation 2 when it is a 5 star and it will cost a lot of primo gems. For her constellation 4, opponents standing within the AoE of her Q takes increased damage. This effect strengthens over time, it begins at 5% and stacks up to 25%. The effect lingers for 3 seconds after the opponent leaves the AoE. So this further reinforces the idea of keeping the monsters in her AoE. You can do it by taunting with her E or freezing the enemies in that AoE of her Q. At constellation 6, Using her E causes the next Frost Flake arrow shot within the next 30 seconds to not require charging. This looks underwhelming for a Constellation 6 passive in my opinion, but do remember that you will gain one more charge of E in Constellation 2. So, well, it's still quite underwhelming to be honest. Now let's move on to her build. For weapon options, I definitely see the Amos Bow as the ideal 5-star weapon for her. It not only increases her normal and charged attack damage, but with an attack percent main stat, it will give Ganyu a ton of damage. For her 4-star weapon options, you will be looking at the Compound Bow, which is craftable if you have the prototype. And this bow will also increase her charged shot damage. Lastly, if you really can't get the prototypes because the 3 weekly bosses are trolling you, you can use the Very Distant Hunt, which is the battle pass weapon as that would give crit rate, which is really beneficial for her as I will get into in the next part of the video. So moving on to Ganryu's artifacts, you definitely need a crit rate build for Ganryu and there are two reasons why. Number one, her innate passive main stat is crit damage, so you definitely want to make use of that and build some nice crit rate on her. And number two, her level 2 charge shot's initial damage and bloom damage's crit rate are separate, so to make sure that both of them score critical hits, you want a high crit rate on her. So for her artifacts, you definitely want the Blizzard Strayer set, which is the new cryo crit rate artifact set that we just got in Dragon Spine. And the 2 piece gives you a 15% cryo damage bonus, while the 4 piece gives you extra crit rate against enemies that are affected by cryo or are frozen. You want attack percent on your timepiece, Cryo damage on your goblet and crit rate on your circlet. And for substats, you're gonna want attack, attack percent, crit rate, and crit damage. Lastly, let's move on to her team composition. For Ganyu, I definitely think that the best way to utilize her as a main DPS would be to put her with someone that can output hydro damage consistently, and right now, I think Mona's elemental skill would be the way to go. Not only does it constantly apply hydro debuff, it also taunts enemies, making it extremely easy for Ganyu. Putting Ganyu's Q on top of Mona's E and firing arrows at the frozen enemies would be pretty nice. If you don't have Mona, you could use Barbara's E and run around the enemies to apply the Hydro debuff, but honestly, I won't recommend that. Other characters that I can recommend to pair with Ganyu would be Pyro characters. If you are using Ganyu as your main DPS, then having characters that can output Pyro damage is going to be good for some additional melt damage. Characters like Klee or even Bennett with Sucrose would be pretty good, though I don't think it will be as effective as using Mona. Last but not least, Venti is a special mention because if you can use Venti's Q to swirl with Hydro or Pyro damage, it will keep the enemies stuck for a good amount of time, which you can use Ganyu's Q together and fire shots from afar, so Venti is a pretty good teammate for her as well. So yeah, we've come to the end of this long video for Ganyu. Do let me know what you guys think of her and also how you're going to build her. Personally, I'm not too thrilled by her playstyle, but I will be pulling for her and testing her out. So if you don't want to miss that, do make sure you are subscribed to the channel and also join the Discord so you don't miss my live stream when her banner drops. Also, if you have any questions regarding Ganyu, do drop them in the comments below and I will try my best to answer them. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.